here uh, Saturday night. Uh, we're in the machine here a bit today. I uh, got a late, late start, uh, slept in, and uh, didn't get this compressor change out until uh, 2 o'clock I was running this afternoon. So I've been running it all day, um, chilling the uh, the coolant that's inside of this really small mini fridge uh, in a bucket. Uh, it's about 20 pounds of propylene glycol and water. Uh, that metal bucket then refrigerates the contents of the refrigerator, just several containers of water. Um, I run the compressor for a period of time to get the coolant temperature down to uh, about 15 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, after, at which time I shut it off, let the temperature rise to about 25, and that seems to keep the uh, cabinet temperature within the uh, the 30s. Um, I'd like to keep it around 34 to 38. Uh, what I've noticed today is uh, it's actually been a little bit colder. They were about just below freezing, so uh, a little too cold, but I wanted to keep a uh, uh, constant maintenance on that temperature of the coolant, and I was able to do that relatively well, uh, with the exception of a, a little trip that I took out and uh, let the temperature get rise a little much and then let it drop a little too much. So uh, this is just the uh, run time today. Uh, started up in the, the 50s there, the cabinet temperature and the coolant. Green line was uh, dropping it down to about 15, and then we'll have it off, and then dropped it back down, got it down to about 12 back up and down and back. So you can see the uh, the long uh, lag with when it's not running. And then the pink line there is the air, air temperature inside the cabinet. You see it's been descending all day long. There's very short runs there. That's uh, that's during a, a run. Um, so this first one here is about, uh, well, other than that, that was 40 minutes or something to bring the temperature down. It was about a half an hour. It was about 15 minutes. And the last one just now when I shut it off is 10 minutes. Um, so uh, the compressor is uh, more than adequate for this this application, um, and then the off time, um, which is what I'm interested in with all this thermal mass, um, is several hours. It's uh, you know in this case here, it's about two hours and twenty minutes, and uh, oh, we got one, two, a little over two hours. This last one was about two and a half hours. Um, so uh, you know, it definitely proves the uh, proves the concept. Um, uh, the compressor is probably oversized. Um, I, you know, I am going to be changing the, uh, the the cabinet style, and I'm going to change the the bucket itself, and uh, uh, going to make some more observations about uh, an appropriate temperature to set it at. Uh, I do not do not have a temperature controller right now. I have an electronic one on the way. I pulled this one out. I pulled this out of a mini fridge, a little electromechanical one. Uh, I just through the, uh, the the cap tube sensing bulb tube down into the uh, glycol and I've just been playing with it a little bit today uh, just check, checking the continuity on it at different temperatures and trying to make some some adjustments uh, there's a it's not focusing very well uh, but there's a, a, a coarse adjustment screw there that will adjust the temperature that it trips at and then there's a smaller brass screw in the bottom that I think adjusts the range uh, so I've just been toying around with it maybe tomorrow I'll get a little bit uh, um, try to actually hook it up and, and see how well I can use it to control, but I'm not too interested in using something like this. It just happens to be what I have. So uh, it's about an eighth horsepower compressor, um, you know, pulling about 0 0.8 to 0 0.9 amps. Um, you know, for this application, it's probably oversized, but it, it's a pretty good size for now. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, once I go to a bigger cabinet, there's going to be greater load on it. In addition, the temperatures slowly fell throughout the day. It, it rained and it's cooled down to about 62 degrees out here now. So that you know that that has some effect on the fact that you know we got longer off times and shorter run times, and the temperature has been falling through almost the entire thing. In this case, this last run, the temperature continued to fall during the off time, while that uh, that that refrigerative capacity continued to uh, absorb heat from the cabinet. And bring it down below freezing, which is isn't something that I really want to uh, to explore too much right now. I'm going to be able to maintain refrigeration temperatures. So um, yeah, I, I, altogether, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I, I think it's uh, pretty nifty that uh, you know it only takes about 10 minutes of runtime every two and a half hours or so. Uh, in all, I think I'd like to get that uh, that ratio uh, up a little bit more. Uh, such that the you know the compressor will be sized such that you know it can run for maybe 20 or 30 minutes uh, you know smaller with a smaller compressor um, and then 
you know, the off time is, is extended. I have to be uh, weary because I'm going to go ahead and open the cabinet because I'm, I'm done for this evening. See the uh, red stripe beer bucket there, a little frosted up. Um, and it's just natural convective currents in here. And then we just have a couple of containers of water just to maintain some kind of uh, refrigerative load. I mean, at this point, once the temperature's down, it's just whatever heat leaks through these, these thin walls. Um, Eventually, I was looking at some uh, stainless steel restaurant pans. Uh, I'd like to build one that uses a, a, probably a six inch or an eight inch third uh, pan. It's a, you know, about that wide, holds uh, six to eight quarts of liquid, um, and be able to suspend it on one side of a somewhat larger refrigerator and then baffle it a little bit so that I can get some warm air rising, or excuse me, warm air rising up over the top of it and descending down across it. Um, in this application here, which is the big bucket in a mini fridge, uh, I don't think it really matters too much. You just have a lot of circulating air, and I'm, no doubt it stagnates, or excuse me, stratifies a bit, such as the coldest air lays at the bottom. Um, but, you know, being that it's so small, it, it, you know, maybe it stays somewhat mixed. It doesn't really matter to me right now. Um, but with a, a, a larger, you know, taller unit, I'd like to keep that uh, stratification to a minimum so that I can have a somewhat uh, some better airflow um, with the larger capacitor compressor even though it's half the size of the one I was just using um, it still pulls the low side pressure and temperature uh, down to you know it probably runs at 15 to 20 pounds per square inch which corresponds to somewhat around you know negative you know negative 10 negative uh, negative 5 which is uh, much much cooler than it needs to be, so it's increasing that, that compressor uh, compression ratio higher than than I'm comfortable with. But uh, you know, it was a pretty uh, it was a fun day. It's just a matter of just coming out here and monitoring it and you know maintaining that temperature. See so the coolant's up to about 16, and I expect it to continue holding for for a while. See the uh, counted temperature rose there a little bit, but has not gotten out of uh, refrigeration temperatures at all, even with the door open. So, you know, the opening and closing a door it shouldn't be as big of an issue with, with a refrigerator. And the vast majority of the energy consumption of a refrigerator is uh, the, the, the objects that you put in it. Uh, and then, you know, I think the, even more than that is the, uh, the insulative value of the box itself. So that, that's the big concern. Uh, so, you know, a modular system like this, and I'm trying to d develop... Um, It'll have to be uh, have some 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 variable capacity, um, and uh, and a thermostat that's that's adjustable both in terms of of the the um, temperatures that it operates at, but also the uh, the range, the cut in, the cut out, um, and and keeping a wide enough range because you know a ten degree split on that coolant maintains the the cabinet temperature within just a few very few small degrees, uh, so. Um, Tomorrow I will uh, probably get up in the morning, fire the thing up, and try to operate at slightly higher uh, coolant temperatures, maybe on the order of uh, 20 to 30 degrees, or you know, 17 to 27, or something of that nature. Uh, so, uh, uh, still don't really have my refrigerant charge completely under control. I uh, still have a, a minor leak that I have to still just top it off a little bit every time that I, that I run it. Um, but uh, I will address that in time. So, anywho, I'm going to button up here and head off to bed. Thanks for watching.